Welcome, I'm Bill Wake. This is my weekly summary of our Twitch sessions. And lately we've been working on this sort tables data viewer. Let's see how it works. Our focus has been on this configure database page. And what we've been doing is adding pieces to make this thing able to duplicate classes, rename them, and uh, work with the joins in that context. So I'll mention database selection. And in this view, you really see that as this uh, visible tables and columns section and also the joins. So kind of this page basically represents the database selection. We'll also talk about table selection, which is really the, the original class, I'm sorry, the original table, its renamed value, and then the columns that are in that table. The first thing we'll look at is a refactoring. We move table reference to selection over to database selection. Let's see that. Database selection knows about the table reference map, which goes from a table reference, the UUID of a table, to a table selection object. And this is what's used to maintain the knowledge of which class is which and which one's been renamed and so on like that. And so that's owned here in database selection. It used to be owned in database selection bridge. It's more of a class to help us connect the old style UI kit to the new Swift UI approach. And the key thing we need there is that it's an observable object. And so it's the thing that owns database selection. When that changes, the UI kit gets notified and things go, go well from there. Within the Swift UI part, the screen you saw, that's all managed from uh, a database view and it works with the bridge and the selection so it can find its way over to the database selection class we're working with. We may duplicate table work this week. That's also part of database selection and so what we have is we're given a table selection for an existing table. We take its metadata and then create a new table selection from that and append it to the list that the database selection maintains. So a pretty simple transformation there. With duplicate table working, then we wanted to take have join analysis take the renamed tables into account. So now you can have the same table twice. If you give them different names, you know which one's which. And we actually require that. Here's table join analysis. Its key job is to create the message if there's an error. So if there's only one table, um, that's not a problem but we check the cross products. And if there are more than one cross product, we formulate an error message. And uh, you saw that at the top of the screen. So the work this week was to make sure that cross products managed with renamed tables. So first we wanted to take the joins. The joins tell us which table is linked to which table. And so we use the renamed tables there. We build up a set of mergers that say, this table is associated with that one. So if registration knows about class, then those two are in a cluster. If it, registration then is told about person, then all three end up in the same cluster. At the end, we'll look and make sure there's only one cluster. If there's more than one, we've got a cross product, which is probably not what anybody wants. If there's only one cluster, then all tables are linked together. So once you have the mergers, you also need the tables that are referenced. First and foremost, that's the active tables. And then um, here again, we get the renamed table name. So we've got renamed joins and renamed tables. And then we also have to add in tables that participate in the joins because um, they may not be included or visible. Visible table might be a better name here. But if you've got a, a registration table that's only job is to link two tables together with foreign keys, it, it doesn't really have any information on its own that we want to show. And so we can hide that table, but because it participates, it needs to be in the list of all tables. Next thing we did was sort the tables by their original name. You could debate about whether original name or rename name would be better. I couldn't decide. So I just picked original name and we'll see what it feels like in use. There's still a twinge to me that thinks, eh, renamed might be what we want, but we're starting somewhere. Get some use and see what we'd like. Sorting also happens in database selection. You may remember when we duplicated the table, we appended it. Well, that's a more complicated process than it might sound. We have to 
take that new table and add it to the list, but then we sort the list here. We used to do that in the view. By doing it here, we make it a testable part of what this does. Then we also have to keep track of it. So that's that table reference map. We add in the new select uh, new table and you know link it to the actual table selection, its ID to the selection. Finally, we allow deleting tables. And if you delete a table, you need to delete the joins that participate with it. We have a couple rules. We want to say that you can't delete the last table with a given original name. So if you had person as person and person as instructor, you could delete either one of those, but you can't delete both of them. And that's because if you start deleting them, we don't have anything to add them back. We just start with the full set and let you du duplicate from there if you need to. Because we do that, we're making it possible to use the rename table name in the working schema, which is the part of the system that actually talks to the database and the rest of the sort table stuff. It's the link from the database selection to the backend display part of the actual sorting of the tables. So delete tables also part of database selection because it's managing that list of tables and it checks to make sure about offsets. So this index set, that's a piece coming from the user interface that's well, it's just a set of integers, but those integers are, you know, which which entry in the table did you want to talk about? And that's why I wanted to make it sorted. So I knew that I had the same indexes in the the user interface and database selection. The, uh, the check that it equals one, that's really um, the kind of selection we're doing should only ever have one. But if it ends up with more than one, we don't want to handle that situation. That's not something we'll support. And then the real check is the original names count. We make sure that for that given table, by its original name, there's at least one of them. Otherwise, we won't let you delete it. The way we stop that is we set this flag can't delete table triggered. And um, because that flag is set, we can display the right message for that. The user interface can handle that. If you pass those checks, then uh, we go to the actual deleting. You first figure out which ID you're gonna delete, so which table ID, and then you go through the joins and only keep the ones that don't reference that table ID. If they reference it, they're participating with a deleted table. That's not good, we wanted to delete them, so we'll leave them out. And finally, we just remove table selections, remove the, the, the table selection at that offset. That has the effect of deleting it. This wasn't a bad week for doing this work. I think I definitely have come to realize how much more database selection ends up owning a lot of the work around tables. Um, it's kind of the thing up one level from the table and it owns the whole list of them. So it ends up with a lot of these uh, delete and add and re rename and and duplicate. Uh, I think we're getting this part definitely cleaner and I'm looking forward to working some more on it. Next week, I wanna do a little work on error messages and some refactoring to a more modern approach to localization. Um, we can migrate to the new string catalog or newish string catalog thing. Um, we're gonna add another constraint that you have to use valid SQL names for renames. And then we're also gonna check about scoped column uh, used to have a table name. It doesn't need it anymore. I also expect we'll look at renaming fields next week. Table was kind of a brutal week a couple weeks ago. I'm, I'm wondering if fields will be better. We're a little more knowledgeable now. I'm hoping that helps. Thanks for watching this summary. If you wanna join us, it's Monday through Thursday, two to 4.30 Eastern time or seven to 9.30 PM UTC. For the live sessions, they're on xp123.com slash Twitch. And if you uh, want old sessions, they're on xp123.com slash YouTube. Those are time delayed. I think they're three or four weeks behind and they're lightly edited. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.